Hello and thank you for joining us. In this video, I'm gonna be covering excessive cooling pressure on a Packard MX-13 engine. I'm gonna let you know what we look for and what we did to help us find and pinpoint the root cause of the problem. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to share your experience, leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. Let's get right into this video. Okay guys, so what we have is a Packard MX-13 with excessive coolant pressure going into the cooling system. Usually if we have something that's happening like this, the first item we're gonna be doing, we're gonna ask the driver if he had any repairs done, and we're also gonna check out the computer. When we asked him what kind of repairs he had done, this is what he shared. He said that he had a thermostat replaced, and he also had a heater core fail on him, which has to do with the cooling system. Okay, this is all good information. It lets us know what's going on with the truck. If you want more history, we're gonna be hooking up the computer not all the time owners are gonna own this truck for a very long time, so using a computer that can pull up history is very useful. Now, the first item that we found on the check engine history, is one item is gonna be an inactive code for the engine fan. It's showing that the engine fan was inoperable and it wasn't working. Now, it's working now, so it's not the root cause there, but we're gonna keep looking at what we found in the history. One thing, couple things I'd like to highlight on what we found in the history is, here, we're for engine time with red stoplight. Now, the red stoplight is letting you know, of course, to stop the engine, don't operate the engine anymore. This particular history is showing that the engine was ran with the stoplight on for over an hour and a half. Okay, so that's not a good indication. Usually when you have a stoplight, that means that the engine is in, critical, in a critical condition and it needs to be turned off immediately. So running it for an hour and a half is not, is not ideal. Okay, the next item we have here is the distance traveled with the check engine light. I know I've mentioned to you before when a check engine light comes on, it's very important to get that check engine light checked out because you can have some problems later on or make the problems even worse. Now, the distance traveled with the check engine light for this particular unit is 103,000 miles that it was driven with the check engine light on. Now, the engine time, the engine time recorded with the check engine light on is 2,200 hours. Now, that's a lot of time with a check engine light running, and it's also a lot of time with the red light, stop engine light being ran. So, this gives it a little bit more, this makes it just a little bit more challenging to troubleshoot these type of problems. But what we're going to do, we're going to cancel out that if it's a head, because if it has overheated, then it's possible that we have a head going, a head gasket or a, a bad head. So we're gonna do a combustion gas pressure test on the cooling system to see if we actually have combustion gas going into the coolant. So let's move over and do that test next. Since we suspect that this truck has been overheated, we wanna check to see if we have a cracked head or a bad head gasket. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do this combustion leak test. Basically, it's just a test to see if there's any combustion gases going into the cooling system. So if we do have a failed head gasket or a cracked head, we should have discoloration. This is a blue liquid and it should turn green or yellow if we have combustion gas going into the cooling system. So I'm gonna turn the truck on and we'll take a look at what's going on and see what we got. So the combustion leak test did not indicate that we have combustion gas going into the cooling system. It's very, it's very challenging when we have something like that. But as you can see, we do have a lot of pressure going into the cooling system. It pushed the coolant all the way out of the reservoir. The next item we're going to be checking to make sure we don't have any problems is the EGR cooler. Now the way we're doing that, we're going to be pulling off the hot pipe 
and verify there's no coolant going in there. The next item we're going to be canceling out is the air compressor. We want to see if there's any coolant going through the air compressor that might be leaking. Air compressors or EGR coolers can also cause excessive pressure in the cooling system. So we're going to take a look at the dryer on the air compressor to see if we have any signs of coolant coming through there. So let's move over to that next. Okay, so the next item we're going to be checking to see if the compressor is going to be our root cause. Now, the way a compressor works is coolant runs through the compressor head to keep the compressor cool. If the head is bad on the compressor, then that compression that's, made, that's being made by the compressor can go into the cooling system. So we're going to look for signs of coolant going through the compressor. Now, I'm up under the truck, we're at the, we're at the dryer because that's where the dryer is going to be purging. The excessive air that the compressor builds up, it's going to be purging through the dryer. So we may have some indications here. So the first item I'm going to look at here is this this is the, the water stain from the purge valve purging onto the ground. Now I see a very, very light red tint, like a rust tint to it. So this could be an indicator that the compressor is what's causing us to build this pressure. The next item we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking into the purge valve. Now it's a little bit tough to see, but I can see a little bit of red tint that's coming out of this, that's coming out of this purge valve for this dryer. Now, how we're gonna, what we're gonna do to actually cancel out the air compressor is we're gonna go ahead and tap, we're gonna top off the coolant lines that go into the air compressor. So we're gonna cap those off, cancel out the lines going into the air compressor, turn the truck back on, and see if we are still getting excessive pressure in the cooling system. If we are still getting excessive pressure in the cooling system, after the air compressor has been canceled, then that's going to be an indication that either we have a head gasket or a bad head and we'll have to tear down for further inspection. We're going to continue troubleshooting this issue to try to find the root cause of why there's excessive pressure going in the cooling system. We're going to cancel out the air compressor, rerun the truck to see if there's pressure still there. If there's pressure still there, that's an indicator that we may have something going on up top like a head gasket or a head. Now, all the indicators kind of show that the truck was ran hot, so we're going to keep all this in mind, and we'll make sure to follow up and do a follow-up video. I hope this information was useful. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas, 75241. And until next time, be safe.